Now in the previous video we had a look at what is the general solution of a trigonometric equation and uh, there's two that we encountered really is that when we have uh, something like sine of x equal to a constant okay then we found our reference angle and we found our reference angle by taking the inverse function of sine and the constant and then we said well now that means that my function or my input is equal to the reference angle plus 360 degrees times k and my other solution is 180 degrees minus my reference angle plus 360 degrees times k. That was the one we looked at. The other one we saw was for cos. If I had cos of, uh, let, let's go different, let's say cos of y equal to k. Then the reference angle is found by taking the inverse function for cos, or the inverse ratio actually for cos and k. And then we saw, okay, that means y is equal to my reference angle plus 360 degrees times, well, this is now a different k than that one. I shouldn't have, let's call this one k1. Um, and then the alternative would be, the other solution is, uh, this was second quadrant, okay, while this one would be fourth quadrant or just negative the reference angle plus 360 degrees times k one k okay. and we should actually call that one k one k I won't use k again that just confuses everyone okay then w the one we didn't look at was tan so there's just something about tan I want to show you tan of whatever z is equal to let's go back to c then finding the reference angle nothing changes here it's just an interesting thing that we notice happens for tan when we find the reference angle the reference angle for tan is either where we have our reference angle plus 360 degrees times k or where we have 180 degrees plus our reference angle plus 360 degrees times k and you won't see it immediately but the one thing about tan that is different from the other two for cos the solution lies in or let's start with sine for sine the solution if c is positive lies in the first quadrant and the second quadrant plus 360 gets me back in the first quadrant or if i was in the second quadrant plus 360 will get me back there for because the solutions lay in the first quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. So if I add 360, I'll be back in the first quadrant. Or if I was in the fourth quadrant, 360 gets me back there. But for tan theta, there's, there's an interesting phenomenon. He, uh, tan is in the first quadrant and in the third quadrant. So if I were to add 360, yes, I'd get back there. Or if I were to be here and I add 360, I'll be back in the third quadrant as well. However, I can summarize both of these in one statement by just taking y is equal to my reference angle plus 180 times k. And here you see, when k is equal to 1, then I've got 180 plus my reference angle. Okay? If k is equal to 2, then I have my reference angle plus 360. My reference angle plus 360. And so all of them are, um, all of the solutions are summarized in this one. So, um, and it also makes sense because if I'm here and I add 180, I'll be there. Okay, let's choose a different color. If I'm here and I add 180, then I'll be there. If I add another 180, I'll be back in the first quadrant. Third quadrant first quadrant. Each 180 that I add gets me back into a quadrant where I have a solution. So this is the summary for um, the trigonometric general solutions. And now let's just have a quick look at the specific solutions, if they give me an interval. Um, but I think I'll look at that in the coming examples. Uh, it will demonstrate it better. See you there.